All right, to begin a more thorough discussion of algebra, we need to start going over some basic vocabulary. So we're going to start out with two main ideas here, term and factor. A term is going to be an expression that does not have any adding or subtracting in it. So we can refer to terms based on two kinds. A constant term is going to be something that is purely a number. And a variable term is going to be something that includes one or more variable letters. Possibly also numbers in there, but definitely has at least one variable letter. Then we can take terms and we can kind of dissect them a little bit more. For our purposes now, we're going to refer to factor only as referring to a part of a term. It's going to be a part of a term that can be separated off so that these separated pieces are multiplied together. So factors are pieces that are multiplied together to build a term, and terms are added together to build larger, longer expressions. A specific factor that could show up would be the number portion, and we refer to that as the coefficient. So as an example, 6x to the power of 2. By itself, it does not have any adding or subtracting in it, so it would be a term. If I take that term and start chopping it up, I could come up with different kinds of factors. For instance, if I chop off the number portion, the 6 would be the coefficient. The x squared would be the other factor. If I chop things up as much as possible, I could break the 6 apart as a 2 times a 3, and the x squared could be broken apart as an x times x. So each of those separated little pieces would be a factor. Factor of 2, factor of 3, factor of x, another factor of x. So these are the two basic ideas. Mostly for the time being, we're going to deal with terms, and eventually we're going to come back to the idea of factors and concentrate a little bit more heavily on that idea of pieces put together through multiplication. For right now, though, it'll be a lot of work where we deal with terms. So we're going to start with the idea of terms that are different from one another or alike. Terms that are alike can be put together. You think, think of it kind of like apples with apples, oranges with oranges. So if you've got a bunch of apples, you're going to throw them in a bin, you're going to put them over there, you're going to separate those out. Anything oranges that you've got going on, you're going to throw those in a separate bin. They stay separate. Apples with apples, oranges with oranges, like terms go together. So plain old numbers, aka constant terms, those are alike. Terms that have the same variable letter, and it's got to also have the same power business going on. So notice here that we have a 2x, that's got a regular x in it, no crazy powers. We've got a negative x, that's got an x in it, no crazy powers. Those would be considered alike. If we've got more variable letters, all the letters and their corresponding powers would have to match up. So y power of 2, z power of 3, y power of 2, z power of 3, those all match up. Those would be considered like terms. Some examples of things that would be different or not alike. A plain old number and something that had a variable. Constant terms and variable terms are very, very much, and hopefully very clearly, not alike. Something that has an x but no power. Something that has an x with a power. Well, officially speaking, x does have a power, of one that we just don't bother to write down so the powers don't match it's got to be a situation where your variable letters and their powers are going to match to be alike y power of 2 z y power of 2 z power of 3 the y stuff would have been good but that z here having that power of 3 means that Overall, things just, well, they're not like. 
Like terms can be put together again with that very nice friendly idea of apples with apples and oranges with oranges. Sometimes that might mean though that we have to do a little extra work. You might have heard of distributing before. So here this example worked out where just to do a little emphasis, we've got a five out in front of that first set of parentheses. So that five is gonna to need to be distributed so that it attaches to the three X and so that the five would attach to the negative two or the minus two. Then we've got the seven in front of that second set of parentheses, that's gonna to need to be distributed so that it attaches to the X and so that it attaches to the four. After we've done the distributing, we've freed things up from their little parentheses prison cells, and we can worry about like with like, apples with apples, oranges with oranges. We've got things that have X's in them, 15X and a plus 7X, those can be put together. We've got plain old numbers or constant terms, a minus 10 or negative 10, a plus 28, put those together and get a plus 18. These two have to stay separated, so there's no shorter answer that we can come up with than the one that we have written, 22x plus 18. Similarly, for some of our other examples here, the next example, notice, has a negative in front of the 4. So we want to make sure that we're especially careful when we do our distributing here, what we've got is the 6z at the very front that we're not really doing anything with for the moment. We're distributing that negative 4. So that negative 4 is going to have to attach to the 2z. And the negative 4 is going to have to attach to the minus 3. And what that creates for us is 6z minus 8z plus 12. Now that everything's freed up and cleaned up a little bit here, we're looking for like terms that can be combined together so that we can shorten our answer. We've got z stuff with z stuff, 6z minus 8z, that can be combined together to give us negative 2z and then the other piece that we have the other term is a constant term that has to stay separated out in the next example we also have a negative this one though very clearly showing up at the front stands out a little bit more but then we have a negative that is in the middle or you could say a subtraction that's in the middle so we're going to have to worry about distributing there as well and making sure that we keep all of our signs in order. So when we distribute that negative four, we'll go ahead and just bang that out with the help of our calculator, negative four times 2.2 gives us a negative 8.8, .8, and that has a Y with it. Negative four times 1.5 is gonna give us a negative six or a minus six. From the subtraction in the middle that needs to be distributed, the minus will attach to the 3.5y, and the minus will attach to the 1.8. Now we look for like terms. y with y lets us put things together and get a negative 12.3y. Plain old number stuff with plain old number stuff gives us a minus or negative 7.8. And other than our integers and our decimals, we could also have fractions that show up as well. So just to prepare you for that possibility, again, all the same sort of basic procedures here, distributing, combining like terms. If you need, the calculator can help you out along the way. Distributing the one half, the one half times the four X will give us two X. The one half times the minus one will give us a minus one half. 
That's the only distributing that we have to do, so we can just go ahead and copy down the other terms and then look for like terms to combine. X's with X's means that 2X minus 7X gives us a negative 5X. Plain old number stuff with plain old number stuff will give us a minus 3. So as far as what we've got going on here, just to kind of tie things back together, we could say that we have 22x is a term, 22 is the coefficient, x is the variable, we have the plus 18, that is a term specifically, that would be a constant term. Negative 2z, the negative 2 is a coefficient, the z is the variable, the 12 is a constant term, kept separated. Negative 12.3 is the coefficient. The negative 7.8 is a constant term. We can put like terms together. Things that are not alike must stay separated. And sometimes we have to worry about distributing. So as always, whenever we've got our negatives, we wanna make sure that we're very careful about those. And when we can, use our calculator to help us out along the way, make sure that we can be very confident about the answers that we get. We'll see this idea of like terms come up again in another little bit when we start dealing with some larger, longer expressions. So we'll have that show up as well in several other areas. That'll, so that'll continue to be important to us. And again, we're going to revisit the idea of factoring later on as well, and that'll be important to us in well, some of those same sorts of areas, generally speaking. So we will see those again, both terms, like terms, and factors.